In this video, we're looking at proofs with parallel and perpendicular lines. Now you've been asked to look at um, the corresponding angles theorem, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and consecutive interior angles, and look at their converses. Uh, we know when two lines, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. The converse would say if two lines are cut by a transversal and the corresponding pairs uh, sorry, the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines must be parallel. That's also true. So hopefully you've taken a minute to work through um, this exploration. If not, hit pause and do so now. Now we're going to look at these four converses. These are theorems we're going to use as we are proving um, proofs about parallel lines. So the corresponding angles converse, like I just said, says if two lines are cut by a transversal so the corresponding angles are congruent then the lines are parallel. So notice here that two and angle 2 and angle 6 are congruent because those are corresponding angles it proves that these lines must be parallel. Similarly alternate interior angles. We know alternate interior angles are congruent if we have lines parallel. The converse says if we have alternate interior angles congruent it proves the lines are parallel. The alternate exterior angle converse says if we have alternate exterior angles congruent, then the lines must be parallel. And the consecutive interior angles converse says if consecutive interior angles, remember we call these same side interior angles, are congruent, not sorry, not congruent, supplementary, then the lines are parallel. I'm just going to write in here same side interior angles to remind you. Um, you'll see them called both consecutive interior angles or same side interior angles converse. Remember those are the ones that are supplementary. If we look at them, they can't be congruent. One's acute, one's obtuse. They can't be equal to each other. I shouldn't say can't. The only time they'll be congruent is if you have perpendicular lines. There is one more theorem we're going to look at, or it's a property rather, and it's a transitive property of parallel lines. We've looked at the transitive property already that says if A then B, if B then C, we can cut out that middleman and just say, okay, if A, then C. Well, here's a transitive property of parallel lines. If P is parallel to Q and Q is parallel to R, notice they cut out the middleman Q and we're just left with P is parallel to R. That's a transitive property of parallel lines. You'll see that in our proofs. We're going to look at a couple of examples of what we'll ask be, be do in this section. Um, first example is it asks us to find the value of x that makes the line parallel and explain our reasoning. Well, if we look at this first example, these two angles here are corresponding angles. We know when corresponding angles are congruent, then we have parallel lines. So if we set these equal to each other so that their measures are the same, then that makes the lengths congruent. If we subtract 8x from both sides, x equals 55. It asks us to find the value of x. So x is 55. That makes um, wait a second, I messed that up. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what I was doing. We should have said 95 equals 8x plus 55. Something didn't seem right there. So we're going to subtract 55 from both sides we'll be left with 40 equals 8x. If we divide by 8, we're left with x equals 5. That looks much better. If we plug in 5, 8 times 5 is 40, plus 55 is 95. That makes these congruent. Our reasoning is the converse of corresponding angles theorem, or you may hear it called postulate. All right. Number two, if we look at this, what type of angles we have? These angles would be alternate exterior angles. So the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem tells us that if we set these equal to each other, uh, it will prove that the lines are parallel. So we're going to set these equal and then solve. We divide both sides by negative 2, x equals positive 35. We plug in 35 here, 200 minus 70 equals 130. Alternate exterior angles are congruent. That proves our lines are parallel. 
The next example, we're just asked to determine if there's enough information to prove that these are parallel. Sorry, there's a typo there. I should say parallel. And if so, state the theorem we would use. So we look at this first one. We have corresponding angles marked congruent here. That's the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. Or again, you may see it said as a postulate. That part doesn't matter so much. So notice, in order to prove lines parallel, we use the converse. If we were knew that the lines were parallel and asked to prove these angles are congruent, we would just use the corresponding angles theorem. If we look at this one, the only angles we have marked congruent are vertical angles. Vertical angles is not a reason to prove lines parallel. So um, there is not enough information to prove those parallel. If we look here again, all we have marked congruent are vertical angles. We don't have enough information to show that anything else is parallel. This last one, we have, if we look at, I'm going to ignore line S for a minute. If we look at lines N and M, these are alternate exterior angles. So by the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem, sorry, I misspelled that. Converse of alternate exterior angles theorem, lines M and N are parallel to each other. Now if we had something like corresponding angles showing that these were parallel, we would know that all three are parallel based on that transitive property of parallel lines. But what we're given, these are the only two lines we can prove are parallel. I should have mentioned up here, M and N are parallel.